Hi, I'm Jim Ward of the Middle Country Public Library, and I'd like to welcome you to another episode in our History Bite series. Today we will discuss the miracle of Stairwell B on September 11, 2001, when miraculously 16 people in Stairwell B survived the, cl- the collapse of the North Tower of the World Trade Center. On the morning of September 11, 2001, Four coordinated terrorist attacks were unleashed by the Islamist fundamentalist terrorist group, Al-Qaeda. First responders were on the scene immediately and began working on how to rescue the thousands of people who worked in the World Trade Center. Among the many firefighters responding to the scene was Captain Jay Jonas and five of his firefighters from Ladder 6 in China, based in Chinatown. The crew parked close to the blazing North Tower and ran towards the entrance as a piece of the building struck their vehicle. At 9.03 a.m., he saw a black shadow and heard a loud explosion. United Airlines Flight 175 had just crashed into the South Tower. Jonas remembers that the lobby went quiet. One fireman looked up and said, quote, we, we may not live through today, end quote. They took the time to shake each other's hands and wish each other good luck. They had been on the 27th floor of the North Tower when they heard a rumble, felt the staircase sway, watched as the lights flickered off and on. A captain from another company let Jonas know the cause of the disturbance. The South Tower had just collapsed. I'm pulling the plug, Jonas said, and gave the order to evacuate. He didn't tell his men why. They didn't know that the South Tower was gone. For me, that was the scariest point, said Jonas. I'm thinking we're not going to make it out. Each firefighter carried close to 100 pounds of equipment that day, but Jonas, a stickler for regulations, wasn't about to let them drop any of it. Still, they moved down the stairs at a, at a good pace. Matty Kamarowski was last in line and not worried. Quote, we had a building around us. Everything was fine. It was clear as a bell, end quote. On about the 20th floor, they ran into Josephine Harris, a 59-year-old bookkeeper who had worked at the Port Authority for six months. Harris had a limp, but she pushed ahead. Just a few months before, she had been hit by a car. My back went up in the air, she says. I came down on my side. Still, she signed herself out of the hospital that same day, Quote, I put a brace on my leg and went on and went on about my business, she says, matter of factly reassuring herself, it's not my time yet. On September 11th, with one good leg, she'd already made it down 50 floors. Catching sight of the limping Harris, firefighter Billy Butler looked at another firefighter who looked at Jonas. What do you want to do with her, Cap? We got to bring her with us, he told his company. By that time, by that point, Harris could barely stand. Butler, short, barrel-chested, and the company's strongest man, put her arm around his shoulder. Others searched for a chair that could be used to carry her down. The company's pace slowed to Harris's. Then, on the fourth or fifth floor, Harris stopped. She wasn't thinking of dying, she'd later say. She was simply exhausted. Jonas hustled off to look for a chair, but he couldn't find one. They would have to carry her down. That's when Port Authority Officer David Lim ran into Jonas. Lim, a canine officer, had locked his yellow lab in the South Tower, promising to return and run to the North Tower to help. Now he was racing down the stairs. A Port Authority captain yelled at Lim to get moving, but he said, You go ahead, and he too put an arm around Harris, helping to carry her to the fourth floor. That was when the wind started, even before the noise. No one realizes about the wind, says Kamarowski. The building was pancaking down from the top and in the process blasting air down the stairwell. The wind lifted Kamarowski off his feet. Lim says Kamarowski flew over him. Eight seconds seconds later, that's how long it took the building to come down, Kamarowski landed three floors lower in standing position buried to his knees in pulverized sheetrock and cement. Battalion Chief Richard Picciotto, 51, was thrown from the 6th to the 2nd floor. Firefighter Sal Diagostino jumped for the protection of doorways. Jonas hustled back into the stairway from a floor where he had been searching for a chair to carry Harris. 
Then the noise stopped. The stairwell was dark, smoky, dusty. The men's eyes, ears, and mouths were clogged with dust. The firefighters sounded off. There were a dozen, plus Lim and Harris. The, the 16 who survived were scattered inside the stairway from the lobby to just below the sixth floor. Miraculously, none had life-threatening life injuries. Two firefighters who had been above and below them in the same stairwell cried for help. Battalion Chief Richard Prunty, 57, radioed from the lobby that he was pinned under a steel beam and losing consciousness. Michael Warcola, 51, a lieutenant on Ladder, ladder 5, radioed that he was trapped on the 12th floor of Stairwell B. He did not know that the 12th floor did not, ex did not exist anymore. He had been thrown somewhere else. The uninjured firefighters tried to reach Prunty and Warcola, but were blocked by debris. Prunty and Warcola died. They spent four hours trapped in the rubble, but all the men on Ladder 6 and Harris made it out alive. But how were 16 people inside Stairwell B from the lobby to the sixth floor spared? Nobody can say for sure, but the survivors were in a structurally unique location in the 110-story tower. The stairwell was at the center of the building's core, a rectangular area of elevator shafts, plumbing, and stairwells. On the bottom six floors, the core was surrounded by open space, a giant atrium that gave the lobby a grand look. Just above the survivors, a thick reinforced cement floor supported a mechanical equipment room. When the towers fell, the reinforced seventh floor, like a protective helmet, helped slow the collapse just enough to divert the debris into the open air of the six-story atrium. Harris went to the firehouse on Canal Street about two weeks after September 11th to meet the firefighters. They gave her a jacket with the words, Guardian Angel, embroidered on it. In the days that followed, there were so many requests for interviews to retell the story of what they had endured. It was so happy a story that the only disagreement seemed to arise over who had saved whom. Had the firefighters, led by Captain Jonas, survived because they paused to help Ms. Harris, a bookkeeper for the Port Authority of New York and New Jersey, as they rushed to leave the North Tower? Or had Ms. Harris, whose legs were weakened by fatigue, been lucky enough to live because of them? Josephine Harris passed away at the age of 69 in 2011 just months shy of the 10th anniversary of 9-11. Harris stayed close with Kamarowski and other firefighters who saved her. Ladder Company 6 served as pallbearers when Harris passed away, carrying her one last time. We had a special bond with her. She was our guardian angel. If she had continued down to the lobby and then our building came down, we wouldn't be around, Kamarowski said. On a day of immeasurable des destruction and loss, miracles were rare. But on September 11, 2001, the miracle of Stairwell B offered a glimmer of hope. As Fire Commissioner Salvatore J. Cassano explained after Harris's passing, On a day that will always be recalled for its inconceivable devastation and unimaginable loss, the story of Josephine and the firefighters of Ladder 6 was nothing short of miraculous. 100 floors of a high-rise building came down on them, and huddled together, they managed to survive. <laughs>